In this video, we're going to talk about the different network architecture techniques that we can use to keep our network secure. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, check out my website at johngood.com to get access to full training courses on distracting interruptions or advertisements. Anybody looking to start a career in cybersecurity, check out my Getting Started page for useful resources and a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. Don't forget to join the community on Discord. The link is down in the description. All right, let's get into the video. When it comes to our network architecture, let's take a look at some of the things that we can implement to improve the construction of our network. When we talk about the physical architecture of our network, we're referring to gear like routers, switches, firewalls, cabling, and anything that we can actually physically touch. So what are some of the typical physical architectures that we can use? Well, we have firewalls and those protect different trust zones in our network. We have intrusion prevention and intrusion detection systems to detect or stop potential attacks and unified threat management or UTM devices that combine a bunch of these different security services into a single device. Software defined networks or SDNs transform a network into programmable systems. SDN networks allow for quicker and more intelligent responses to changes in our network and it's all done through APIs, so application programming interfaces. Virtualization is something you might be familiar with, but it allows us to run multiple systems that are virtual on top of hardware. Instead of dedicating one physical system to a task, you can actually run multiple systems and take advantage of that idle hardware. You might use virtualization to run security appliances, servers, or even virtual desktop infrastructure, or VDI, which is basically hosting computers that users would use in the cloud. Virtualization also allows us to do containerization where applications run in their own environment instead of full operating systems. Kubernetes and Docker are two of the most well-known containerization technologies that you should be aware of. A major problem in organizations today is the ability to track asset inventory. It's crucial that you know what systems are on your network so you know what to protect. Now there's automated tools on the market such as SCCM from Microsoft, but the key point here is that you need to track every system through its entire life cycle. What good is security if we aren't actually logging events and monitoring our systems? As our networks grow, it's extremely important that you ingest logs into a central tool, so a SIM, typically, a security information and event management tool. It just brings all these logs in together. Large networks might have millions of events that are occurring that security professionals have to go through and they have to correlate and connect the dots it is very difficult if you don't have a central location for that because you need to detect abnormal behavior based on your normal behavior on your network. A really popular SIM tool is called Splunk. Encryption is a tool that we might frequently use within our networks to protect sensitive data from unauthorized eyes. Secure network designs consider a lot of different factors for encryption, including key management, how encryption keys are stored, and where data might be stored once it's unencrypted. For example, if a system has to decrypt the data first and then it caches it on that actual system. In today's environment, certificates are very important to an organization. We use certificates to verify people's identities for personnel who sent email or if they need to authenticate. We might also use SSL or TLS certificates for websites. There's a few key points when it comes to certificate management. First of all, any type of private key or passphrase for certificates has to be protected. Those private keys are so important. If certificates have to be revoked, then we have to do it immediately. We can't wait. As certificates reach their expiration date, we have to make sure they're updated. Ultimately, with certificates, you want to centrally manage them so you can limit the issues that are going to exist. This might mean that we're actually managing them internally, but we also might use an external third-party system to issue and manage the certificates for us. Active defense involves using offensive measures they counter the activity of our adversaries. We might shut down systems, disable accounts, or other actions to directly respond to attacks. Honeypots are systems that are intentionally vulnerable to attract attackers so that we can actually take a look at their activity and what they're trying to do. Think about if you're playing a sport and how effective it could be if you actually know the other team's strategy. It's the same idea here in that we can identify what an attacker plans to do and then we can stop it because we're ready for it. Depending on your cloud deployment, your security responsibilities might vary. Software as a service and platform as a service vendors, much of your security might be covered by contracts and requires you to actually rely on the vendor. Infrastructure as a service in cloud environments like AWS, Azure, and so on, 
provide you, the customer, more control to do things like those traditional security controls. A few services that you might consider researching are Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC, which is basically an on-demand, semi-isolated environment in the cloud. So think of if you wanted to just spin up a network and put it in the cloud, that's what VPC is. And Cloud Access Security Broker, or CASB, tools to enforce security policies when cloud resources and services are used. Question of the day. If we decide to use honeypots in our network, where should we put them? Why that location? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we talked about different network architecture techniques that we can use to keep our network secure. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training about distracting interruptions or advertisements, and I'll see you next time.